Well, here we are, Paul. Good news. Good we're, news back, we're, we're back here again. Absolutely. Remember that, that, the that, old that. two blokes on the Muppets? <laughs> Remember the old two blokes on the Muppets? Someone said to us we were a bit like the two old blokes on the Muppets. I don't know that I'm feeling like an old bloke. I feel, I feel like we're here. We, this week we had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds yes. of people looking at the uh, at the program. Yes. And so, and you've had a huge week with people throughout Africa and yep. whatever on the Jesus Jesus movement. Yes. Today we're tackling. Welcome tonight, by the way. And and look, before anything, why don't you get out to your uh, your, your share button and just share, share, share? Because tonight we're talking about a subject. Is this the biggest subject, the biggest banner, the biggest sign before the uh, the Lord Jesus returns? I don't know, Paul, but we're going to discover it tonight. But the subject is Aliyah. And uh, before we really get into it tonight, uh, we want you to engage and be a part of this. This is so important. If you're a believer in Jesus or you're thinking about uh, coming to the Lord, uh, we're at the time when great things are happening on this earth. And it's, it's a bit like uh, yellow neon signs flashing. And if you're missing the signs now, I don't think they're going to get much bigger than the sign that we're talking about tonight. It's one of the biggest signs yeah. uh, before the Lord Jesus comes back. But before we do, we're going to read the Word of God to start with Paul. Yep. Um, and look, please, absolutely uh, get online, ask your questions. Get engaged. If you're watching this throughout the week after we've delivered this, still send your questions. If you've got thoughts about this, we're going to put some scriptures with it as well. Uh, so let's let's start. The subject tonight is AR, the greatest show on earth. So let's let's get involved. Let's go straight to Jeremiah in chapter 16 and verse 14. And I'm going to hand it over to you, Paul, in a minute after I read this. I've got a question for you. Therefore, behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that it shall... No more be said, the Lord lives who brought up the children of Israel from the land of Egypt. But the Lord lives who brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from the lands where he had driven them. For I will bring them back into the land which I gave to their fathers. Now, Paul, for those that uh, understand the word of God, that's a huge thing for Jeremiah to prophesy because from the... Uh, Judaic perspective, Exodus chapter 6, 6 says, teach your children these things. The Lord delivered them from Egypt, the land uh, where they were enslaved, and brought them to the promised land. But Jeremiah is saying, they'll no longer be doing that because something bigger is going to be happening. Right. So I've heard many Christians say uh, statements like this, this is not important. God's finished with all of this. God's rejected the Jewish people. This is Old Testament, not New Testament. What do you think about that? Yeah, thanks, uh, Pastor Greg. We we've been uh, well, we've been studying this for some time, and it's absolutely fascinating. But you know, we often we live in a time where people uh, almost don't think that there's any more uh, prophecy from the full, from the Old Testament to be fulfilled, and yet we find ourselves right in the midst of a, a prophecy being fulfilled uh, as we speak tonight. And, uh, and it's happening all over the world, and, and uh, it's all about uh, people being repatriated uh, back to the land of Israel. Uh, so I'm just going to uh, share a scripture. You know, back in the time of Moses, uh, people were, were you know, called out in, in the sense that there was this exodus where God brought them out of the land, out of slavery, and they were to return um, uh, back to the, to the promised land, which was the land of Canaan at the time. But... What happened was is that there were some prophetic words that were given to Moses in, in a sense of a warning of what would happen if people, uh, his chosen people, the Israelites, walked away from God. So I'm just going to read from uh, Deuteronomy. We're in chapter 28, if you've got your Bibles there. And um, you know, obviously have a read of the, the full chapter because it's very enlightening. But we're going to read from verse 64. And it says, Then the Lord will scatter you among all peoples from one end of the earth to the other, and there you shall serve other gods, and there you, and sorry, which neither you nor your fathers have known out of wood and stone. And among those nations you shall find no rest, for, nor shall the sole of your foot have a resting place, but there the Lord will give you a trembling heart, failing eyes, and anguish of soul. So this word's, uh, you know, 
it's not pleasant. It's uh, it can be quite disturbing. And I think uh, there's a dire message in this actual uh, word here, and it basically says that you know if the Lord's people, when they go back to the land of Israel, if they're disobedient to Him, that there will come a time when they're scattered. Mm. So we we all read in the Bible about the time of uh, of Babylon, and we know in the time of Babylon that the Israelites uh, were taken out of the kingdom of Judah and they were taken and put into exile in Babylon. When they returned from that exile, uh, that's when we start to understand this term uh, Jews or the Jewish people because it means uh, people from the land of Judah. So we have this terminology change, but more significantly than that is that this was the first time where the people who had been scattered had been returned back to the land of Israel. But the scripture also uh, leads on and tells us that there's actually going to be a second time, Greg. And that, sec that second time is happening right now. And it talks about how people are going to be returned from where they've been scattered, from the four corners of the earth. And these people, it talks also about during that time from this scripture, that they would have no rest in those lands. And as history shows, that these people have been persecuted uh, wherever they've lived, and yet they've never lost their identity. And at this point in time, you know, this this uh, word that we're talking about, this alia, uh, is people being returned, they're immigrating back to the land of Israel. And this is the second time, the scriptures talk about that there will be this second time, and they will come from the four corners of the earth, not just from one place. It's um, This is a huge scale thing, uh, Paul. By the way, thanks. Welcome to Teresa. Love to have you uh, online, Tony. We'll answer your question about the third temple another time. Maybe we'll get a guest on to talk about that. But um, we're just trying to focus tonight on the subject of Aliyah, the return of the Jewish people back to Israel. I'm going to quote a couple of figures here that I just found absolutely amazing. Um, of course, we know you mentioned first return, second return. Um, we we know that in the scripture, when the children of Israel came back from from Babylon, there were sort of a, a few waves. You know, Shez Bazaar, there was the Zerubbabel, there was Ezra, there was Nehemiah. They came back in a few waves. You know, anywhere 50,000 people, maybe give or take. Yeah. Um, and they actually record the numbers there yes. in the scriptures. But in the second return, which is happening as we speak. In fact, it's been happening since 1882. Yes. Since 1882 until today, the figures, I went online today to find out the figures, over 3.6 million mm. Jewish people have returned to Israel. Yeah. Now, if the first return was 50,000, give or take, and the last return, the second return, is 3.6 million, People have come back into land since 1882 in this thing called Aliyah, returning. Something's happening. Yes. In fact, over one million of those have come back from the Soviet Union alone. Now, I want to read another scripture here. Uh, it's Isaiah 11, verse 11. It says, It shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand ag again the second time yes. to recover the remnant of his people who are left from Assyria and Egypt, from Pathros, Cush, from Elam, Shinar, from Hamath and the islands of the sea. Do a study yourself to find out. Each one of those is actually represents a modern day country even now. He's basically saying there will be no third return. Amos says, I will plant them in the land and no longer shall they pulled up, be pulled up from their lands that I have given them, says the Lord. And they shall, in Isaiah 60 says, they shall inherit the land forever. It seems to me, Paul, that we are living in an age where we are actually seeing before our very eyes the great and final assembling of the Jewish people in fulfillment of the prophecy to the land of Israel. Yes. And so um, what does this mean in relationship to the times that we're living in? What are we, what, what are we seeing here? I, I recall one of the scriptures, and maybe I'll be able to find that, is that this actual sign is a banner, a sign, a call out to the nations that the return of Jesus or the return of the Messiah or the coming of the Messiah is about. What's your take on this? 
Yeah, well, uh, so forgive us because we're sort of reading uh, some of the scripture as we're talking with you. Uh, but the, the Bible actually says that after a long time being preserved in, in the various nations of the world, that the Jewish bin people would begin to return to their own land. And it talks about in the last days. So this significance of talking about the last days, we've passed through 2,000 years of history since the time of Jesus. So that was the second dispersal. So after they were taken off to the land of uh, Babylon and returned, that was their first return. When we get to 70 AD, the general Titus, the Roman general, came along. Uh, people were killed. People were enslaved. And most people actually uh, just ran away, literally. They went to the four corners of the world, and they've been living there ever since. So they were actually dispersed you know, some 2,000 years ago. So this has been a huge, long journey to the present time. Now, we get to the present times, uh, you know, 70 years into the nation of Israel as it is again now, and the scriptures are telling us that in the last days that this repatriation of the people going back to the homeland will be a signal that it is actually the last days before yeah. Jesus is going to come. So, yeah, it's a, very, uh, it's a very powerful and very significant event that we're not just witnessing, but, you know, we can actually participate in ourselves. It's incredible um, because there's, like we're saying, uh, what are the signs that Jesus is going to be coming? What's the signs? What we're looking at, what's the, what things have to happen before his return is that there must be a nation called Israel. Right. Now, the devil has done everything in his power to try and stop that happening. Yes. In fact, you know, the whole lead up to the, the nation of Israel becoming a state again was uh, of this phenomenal opposition to the Jewish people mm. having a homeland. But in 1948, it happened. Yes. The day after it happened, five Arab nations tried to take them out while they were still just assembling right. themselves and having a party for having become a nation. Yes. And they weren't able to do it. Yes. And from that period of time on, every it seems the, the, the antagonists have been trying to destroy them and wipe them out. And yet the Lord says that he's coming back to a nation called Israel. Right. So what wasn't there, as you said, for 2,000 years, suddenly in our... Well, maybe not my lifetime, Paul, and I don't think you you were alive in 1948, unless mm -hmm. I'm mistaken. But in this generation, uh, the, the 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 nation of Israel has been recreated or re re-established. Mm -hmm. The second thing that has to happen is that Jerusalem must be the capital of that nation That's because right. Jesus is coming back and he's going to walk into a city called Jerusalem, which is the capital of the nation of Israel. So that has yet, I think happen even though uh, we're seeing you know some movement towards that but the biggest of all the things in my understanding the thing that you can't ignore in fact God says if I don't do this I will break my covenant with the day and the night and I'll break it with the, uh, the waves and the oceans the the yeah. if I don't do this promise uh, I can forget my promises with everything else and this should hearten Christians I think is that if God's not going to break his promise with the Jewish people, he's never going to break his promise or covenant with the people of God uh, right. full stop. And so what we're seeing now, or well, I've just read 3.56 million or 3.6 million Jewish people coming up from four corners of the earth, it's happening on a massive scale. We talk about immigration in our nation. We only want 190,000 people to come in here. Mm. We're talking about a million people in a decade, you know, uh, on just on one place. Yeah. This is huge and massive. Sure. This, in my opinion, is literally the neon signpost to say, as this you start to see this happening, the Lord is getting ready to come. Right. And you know, and as Christian uh, people, you know, we should be incredibly excited at the moment. You know, we have to look at God's purpose in all of this as well, because we we have this situation that God's powerful hand has always been on this situation. God said that no matter where his people were, that he would always recognize them as a nation of people. They were his people. So even though uh, they've been put through adversity because of being disobedient, he never walked away from them. He made a covenant with Abraham and he promised them that he would always bless his people. He would never walk away from them. But then he went on to say something further, and that's for us as Gentiles or Christians, is that he would bless all people of all nations. So, so what does that look like? So when we look at God's hand in this, we've got to acknowledge what his purpose is in this. 
And so when, when uh, he gave this promise to Abraham, and it's in Genesis uh, chapter 18, verse 18, by the way, but he says that he promised that all the nations on earth would be blessed through him. So ultimately, the fulfillment of the promise is the Messiah. It's the saviour of our world, Jesus Christ. So when we walk in our day to day, we have to realise that we've been given this opportunity, this privilege, where there's been this period of time where many of us who are not Jewish people, so we're not bloodline descendants, have had this opportunity uh, to come into alignment with the Father uh, of the Father of Israel. And so we too uh, have spiritually blessed by this very same covenant. So if this situation never occurred, then none of us would ever have this opportunity that we have today. So having said that, we're now in that situation where not only has the opportunity been given to generations and generations of people across you know, 2,000 years, but we're actually in those last days right now where we are actually, uh, perhaps it's not going to happen right this moment, as Greg said, but we are witnesses to what's actually happening. Aliyah is happening now. People have been repatriated from around the world back to Israel now. And Christian people from all over the world are actually contributing and funding and assisting in practical ways to actually help these people to go back because it is part of the biblical prophecy and it is part of our journey as Christian people. And we need to acknowledge that the Jewish people are our brothers and our sisters. And so together we will fulfill this biblical pro pro prophecy, beg your pardon, and by fulfilling this, this biblical prophecy, we're going to see the return of Jesus. And that should make us all extremely excited. Well, we've got a few people online here. I, uh, you know, I, I see Eurasima. Great to have you, Eurasima. Pedro, thanks for your comments. And, and, and so I, um, one of the questions that's just come through is uh, from uh, Teresa. Good question. Will all, the, all Israel, uh, fit, fit the, will Israel fit the Jews coming back? It's a great question. Well, let's talk about that in a tick, uh, Teresa. Um, one of the things you touched on is that it's, our, it's a joy for us to see this happening, but the scripture also talks about how uh, as part of this, this whole um, you know, end time uh, repatriation, if you like, or the bringing back of the Jewish people that God's doing miraculously back into the land, is that the Gentiles, which are... You know, by and large, the Christian community of the world yes. are the ones that are going to be very much a part of it. Now, I know I've heard many a time in, in different places that, uh, you know, that, that we're finished with the Jewish people, you know, we're the new Israel. I, can I just um, recommend that uh, you have another look, have another look at the scriptures, uh, because have a listen to these, these scriptures here. Jeremiah 31. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the isles afar off and say, He who scattered Israel will gather him and keep him as a shepherd does his flock. Yes. From the isles of far off. Mm -hmm. Now, in those days, maybe the isles of the Mediterranean seas. But think of the places where the Jewish people are returning from physically and literally today. And you can't get further away from Jerusalem than Australia and New Zealand. Right. And they're coming back from there. That's right. Um, it says in Isaiah 49 and verse 22, thus says the Lord God, behold, I will lift my hand in an oath to the nations. Yes. This is not a promise to the Jewish people. This is a promise to the nations. And oftentimes he's talking to those believers of Jesus when he says that I'm making an oath. Let's just say he's making an oath even to the Christians and set up my standard for the peoples. They shall bring back your, their, your sons in their arms and your daughters shall be carried on their shoulders. Here is an oath to the nations that he's giving the great privilege to the yes. people of God, yes. those that are non-Jewish, to be a part of this huge process that's going to usher in the return of the Lord. Yes. So what a great, a great honor it will be. Um, in that final scripture, let me just say Ze Zephaniah 3 and verse 20. At that time, I will bring you back, even at the time I gather you, for I will give you fame and praise among all the peoples of the earth when I return your captives before your eyes, says the Lord. When in the last 2,000 years has the nation of Israel and the Jewish people have been famous in the eyes of the nations like it has today? And I was just reading of a new invention this week that you put drops in your eyes, nano drops, and it, you don't have to wear these anymore. Look at the inventions, the drip irrigation, the 
hydro, uh, you know, the um, desalination, exporting yep. of water, technologies, etc. Yep. This nation is 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 the fa is a famous nation now. So, also, so what a privilege! Sorry, but, just, yeah. but also because, if well, frankly, they haven't been a nation for very long again either. So for this uh, period to be now, it's relevant just to, just literally because it's a very short live nation if you will as a as a modern nation uh it's only been going for 70 years again so so it's sort of, it's, it, it brings us to the pointy end of the stick you know there's not a lot of scope to work with there for 2000 years when you've only got a nation that's been formed for 70 years so all of these extraordinary things that are happened can only happen literally now because as the nation has got on its feet it's had to you know work through all this adversity in order to actually you know take care of its own people to give it a that those practical uh, needs where they can actually fulfill the requirements of, of everyday living to, you know, to to have a roof over their heads, to feed their families and educate, etc. So, yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, we're in a very, uh, very specific uh, time zone right now. Back to that question, Paul, about um, will Israel fit all the Jewish people? It's interesting because um, last year, uh, was it, it was last year, oh, we were over in Beersheba celebrating the 100th celebration of the... Um, the the charge on Beersheba, the Australian light horse, and um, I was amazed at uh, this city of Beersheba is set up in a desert, yep. in the Negev. Yep. Even the Top word the Negev, Negev makes you just not want to wander <laughs> in there without a lemonade or something. But <laughs> here we are in the Negev, and this city is just everywhere. It's got green uh, plants, parks, you know, reservoirs of water, high-rise buildings, car yards, things you'd see mm. in a metropolis, in a city. Mm. And when I talked to uh, some of the people who uh, lived in, in, in Beersheba, they were saying it's, it's growing at a, a, a very incredible rate. And they're just building straight out upon the desert. Uh, what the Jewish people seem to be able to do that other people don't do, can't do, it's, a, it's quite amazing. Mm. But yes, the land, uh, Teresa, of Israel is, even though it's tiny in size, the Jew, it would easily fit the current Jewish population in it. Uh, but there's another aspect to that is that the land that was promised to Abram back in, in, in when he, when the covenant of Abraham was made in Genesis chapter 15, described a land far bigger than even the borders of current day Israel. Well, I think um, statistically it's, uh, it's about 13.6 it's million people currently live in Israel. And I understand that for the first time this year, that they've actually surpassed the number of Jews that, that are living in Israel is now greater than those who don't live in Israel. So we look at the size of Israel itself, and uh, if you travel the land there, there's a lot of vacant space still. Uh, and as Greg's mentioning, a lot of it's not very nice to live in. But, you know, I remember when I went there, uh, we were travelling up to Beersheba and we came up through the desert of Paran and Zin. And we came to this place called Mizpe uh, Ramon. And it's like a big rim from a, like a crater. It's, uh, and there's, there's these kibbutzes that are being set up. So basically communities who are coming uh, to Israel to make Aliyah are actually being put into these locations and Israel as a nation, they actually fund everything. They give them homes, they give them education, they teach them the language, they raise their children, they give them the means to actually produce what they actually need. So some of the technology that Israel's developed is actually allowing them to farm lands that have never been farmed before. So they're able to move into these you know, barren desert regions, which you and I would think, you, you know, you've got to be joking, we're not going to live there. And they're actually turning them into oases. And when you see that, you realise that they can replicate this again and again and again. So I don't think they're going to have any problem repatriating the balance of people there. Yeah, good point. Um, listen to this. I mean, Jeremiah chapter 3, it says, In those days, uh, sorry, then it shall come to pass when you're multiplied and increased in the land in those days, uh, says the Lord, that they will say no more the ark of the covenant of the Lord it shall not come to mind, nor shall they remember it, nor shall they visit it, nor shall it be made any more. At that time, Jerusalem shall be called the throne of the Lord, and all the nations shall be gathered to it, to the name of the Lord, to Jerusalem. No more shall they follow the dictates of their evil hearts. In those days, the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel, and they shall come together out of the land of the north mm. to the land that I have given as an inheritance to your fathers. Mm. We saw that back in between the 1990s and the year 2000, this huge exodus of people 
uh, from Russia, uh, you know, well, over the last century, uh, from Russia and the, the pogroms, etc., mm. have made their way back into the land of Israel. So this great exodus of the Jewish people have come from that. It's got to be an indicator because it's talking there about the throne of the Lord being set up in the, in the city of Jerusalem. Mm. Great point from uh, Teresa's. She's right on the ball tonight. <laughs> um, the second part of the prophecy before the Lord can come back is that the Jewish people must receive Jesus mm. as the Messiah. You know, that is such a good point. Um, and the two, uh, I believe, are related, that the Jewish people must come back into the land. And whilst we're talking about that subject tonight and our time is actually coming mm. to a close, uh, it's good to remember that the, you know, we, we, we're not, we don't, there's no two covenants here. Mm. Jesus said, he said, I'm the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So there is a recognition of the Messiah that will come to the people. And it says all Israel will be saved, but only through the recognition. In, in Zechariah chapter 12, Teresa, you should read that. Uh, it says that uh, Israel, they shall look upon him whom they have pierced and they shall mourn. Mm. There will come a great repentance on the nation of Israel before uh, he comes. In fact, that will be probably the final thing that unlocks the return of the Lord. And I think, you know, in modern times, we can see, you know, the synergy that's starting to happen with different nations of the world and Christian people who are actually, you know, becoming involved with the Jewish people yeah. and the Jewish nation. So mm. traditionally, you know, the Christian people have been seen as enemies of the Jews because of a lot of what's happened in history and, and sometimes vice versa. But we find ourselves in a time now, like with Alia, you know, 10 years ago, uh, Jewish people repatriated Jewish people to Israel. There was no involvement from Christians, whereas today there's Christian pe people from all over the world who are actually sewing into this and, and also going to Israel and helping in a practical way. So for me, you know, we look at that and we talk about how they're going to come to Christ. Well, Obviously, as we become brothers and sisters together and we have the opportunity to communicate, you know, many uh, Jewish people are actually turning to the Lord as they realise that uh, we're not perhaps the enemy that they thought we were. <laughs> well, our time's coming uh, fast to a close. We've just had a big hello from Rosina. Hello, Rosina. Bula Vanaka. Bula, Bula from Fiji. Lovely to have you with us and all those who are watching all over the world. The Lord bless you. Uh, please uh, have a think about what we've talked about tonight. Go and search some of the scriptures. We'll try and leave some of those scriptures for you. There's, there's lots and lots and lots of these scriptures. That's why I'm saying this is a big sign. Mm. So the Lord bless you. I, um, I pray that you have a fantastic week. Share this around. Why don't you go and share it now uh, so that more and more people can, and can be a part of these, this preparation of the world for the Lord's great return. Mm. But from Paul and myself, um, like the two old Muppets on the Muppet Show, or the old two Ronnies. Well, it's good, it's good on me, me and it's good, good on him. <laughs> good night. God bless good night, you. Everybody. Bye for now. Good night.